Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Wickblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. This is my first Wickblock Wednesday in quite some time. I actually took the uh, summer off from doing these videos. Uh, so it's it's been, I think, it was probably late spring on my last video. So um, it's really wonderful to be back uh, and to, to do these videos and share uh, wonderful things with all of you. Um, it was one of those things. This summer, uh, it had some travels, but it, it was almost as if every Wednesday, um, I was thinking about doing a video, something would come up and then just sort of um, you know, get me off track. Uh, and, and so this is, again, the, the first video of the fall season, and I'm actually in the middle of preparations for our next website update, which is an exhibition on figures um, as explored or considered through Japanese art. So I will have prints, paintings, um, even some sculpture um, that highlight the human form. Uh, and so, you know, it's a really, I think, a very thought provoking and fascinating um, exhibition. And so I, I welcome all of you to to join us and have a look at that exhibition when it's up. Um, I'm thinking it should go up in a couple of weeks, certainly no later than the last week of October, we should have the exhibition up. So if you haven't joined our email list, please go to our website, collectingjapaneseprints.com and sign up so that you'll be notified as soon as the exhibition is up. Now, today I wanna to talk about a three pieces that are actually really one lot that are going to be in this exhibition. Um, it's a very rare suite of works um, that I'm very fortunate to be able to share with all of you. Um, and, and so without further ado, let's just go to the table and see what I have. So I'm going to back up a little bit so you can sort of see, I always like to sort of pan out. You can see what's, what's on tap for our conversation. And what I have here is a beautiful suite of, actually, this is a woodblock print. This is the key block. Um, and this is the original painting. So it's a painting on paper. Um, and this is a woodblock printed key block. It's the first outline um, that's used to create the subsequent color blocks. Um, and so it's, it's one of those really rare things to, to have. Not many have survived. And of course, the, the finished woodblock print. Now, the, this work was done by Shuho Yamanaka, um, and his dates are from 1898, um, and he passed away in 1944, so like right um, before the war ended. And uh, the, the design is called Red Color. And it's from his four images of women. Um, and he did, obviously he did four. And they're loosely associated with the, with the um, seasons. Um, now, it's not necessarily labeled anything other than red color, but this one, most people associate with spring. And so it's, you know, a really beautiful design of a bijinga or a, um, a beautiful woman. And what I want to also point out is the background is um, basically silver mica that's been applied. And so in person, it, it shimmers with a really, um, with, a, it, with a really wonderful effect. It, it has like, you know, it creates a sense of depth and it brings the figure forward. And that background um, also is just highlights um, you know, kind of almost a uh, very dramatic theatrical sort of quality in the in the uh, design. So I'm just going to zoom in so you could see the the detail. You can look at the, the hair, of course the background, the silver mica, and the kimono. But you know, I want to spend some time on looking at the other pieces because this is this is a print you 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 see. It's not that common. It's actually pretty rare but um you see it but of course this this pair is uh, in essence unique um because this is an original 
um, painting. So I just want to show for a moment the key block that was used to print this impression. And, and the reason this exists is that the, the, the printer printed um, dozens and dozens of key block impressions. And, and these impressions were used by the woodblock carver to carve the subsequent color blocks. Um, and so that the registration would be perfect. And so, so it basically glued the key block onto a block of wood and then carved out the particular aspects of the design that, uh, that correlated with a particular color. So, so the key block was very, very important in the production of, of, of the print. Um, and so because they produced so many um, to create the subsequent color blocks, these exist. And clearly they needed to produce more than they needed. And so, you know, just in case, because you just never know when you're going to mess up. And so here we are, we, we see the entire um, key block. And also what we see here is the kento which is interesting. Um, we don't see anything in here because it's been trimmed um, when it was finished. But a kento is the registration uh, little niche that's carved into the key block to make sure that the piece of paper that, it, well, that will be the print does not move around on the block. And so, you know, that it's neat to see where the kento is. But of course, I think the star of this uh, this sort of uh, ensemble is the original painting and um, the the vibrant colors of this painting is just it's just startling you know when you see these vibrant pinks and reds and then of course the black of the hair and then we, we have here some lighter um, black it's more of a gray that creates kind of um, um, almost if you could see a shimmering effect from light coming across, uh, you know, her hair. It's, it, it is, um, oh, uh, hi, Liz. Oh, we got a question, so I'm going to address the question. And the question is, what is the key block made from? Is a special paper? Great question. So this key block is basically the same kind of paper in the sense that it's handmade Japanese paper, but it's thinner than the original print. However, it is this particular impression of this key block is mounted onto a thicker cardstock to protect the paper because it is thinner. And the reason it's thinner is because it's used in the carving of other blocks. So as I said earlier, you, you glue this key block down onto the block and then you carve out different aspects of the design. And so the paper, of course, has to be thinner than the finished print. So, but that's a great question. Uh, but anyway, to get back to the, 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 the finished watercolor, you could see how vibrant the colors are, the wonderful effect, again, as I was saying, um, of almost like a light glistening off the, the woman's hair. You see how delicate the strands of the hair are on right on her face very very delicate and and you could see how the artist created the the hair that's sort of just falling um away from from her bun there it's a little bit different than the finished print the hair on the finished print is a little longer but generally speaking the 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 painting and the print are virtually identical with a few little nuances by and large they're identical and that's kind of an important uh, point to make about um, the printmaking process and shinhanga now of course these prints this print in particular the shuho belongs to the the genre of shinhanga and for those of you who don't know, Shinhanga is, is a, a genre of printmaking in Japan um, that occurred in the early part of the 20th century that basically it was a collaborative process of the woodblock publisher um, hiring the artist, the woodblock carver, and the woodblock printers. And basically, you know, the publisher hired everyone and, and commissioned the design from the artist. And so... 
because it was a collaborative process and an artist was working basically in a different medium. The artist was working in watercolor, in pigment on paper. And so Shinhanga, um, in many ways, is a artistic genre that reflects not just the not not just the final sort of output of the finished wood block print, but this print is connected to the to the original sketch drawing painting. So unlike Shinhanga, a Sosakuhanga artist often created the design directly in with the carving of the block. There were artists, of course, that designed the work on paper and then reworked it into block, into the block. But generally speaking, Sosakuhanga artists use the block as their paper, and they uh, they sort of directed their creativity onto the carving directly onto the block, and then of course printing of it. But for Shinohanga artists. The artist was not involved in the carving or printing. And so what we have here is the artist's finished watercolor, um, finished watercolor drawing, painting of the design. And so it's wonderful to see these two. You know what? I'm going to move this over so that we can compare. I'm going to move back a little bit. They're roughly the same size. It's just that the print has a margin. Um, yeah, yeah, they're uh, basically exactly the same size. So, which is kind of neat. Um, and you would expect that because what, what they probably would have done is gotten some tracing paper and traced out the design onto the block and carved out the key block. And that key block then helped them with the the creation of the subsequent blocks, as I said. Oh, there's a little piece of paper on here. Let me remove that. But anyway, I, I just want to zoom over the surface of this uh, painting so you could admire how, how beautiful and delicate this work is. The other aspect of it that I think is kind of interesting is the background is kind of a silvery gray. Now, it's not a metallic pigment. Um, you would think maybe the artist would have used a metallic pigment to sort of highlight what, what the mica would look like. But in this case, it's just kind of a gray wash. And what that might suggest is that either the gray is suggestive of the mica, or it was something that the publisher sort of added in the process of making the, the design. So um, I have seen these studies for the finished print with silver on them. And so because this one does not have the silver, it has kind of a grayish silver background, but not metallic. Um, it might suggest that the, the silver mica was something that was then uh, decided upon after the the watercolor and quite frankly it was the right decision you know the the print with the silver mica it just looks exquisite and very delicate it accentuates um, the delicate printing um, as well as the subject and it, as i said it adds really a wonderful sense of drama so I'm going to I'm going to come back and just kind of zoom in so you could see how beautiful this original watercolor is. I I just love the hair. I think that's my favorite part of this this watercolor. It's so lifelike. You know, really it's hard to capture, especially it's in the evening here in Chicago. I usually go live in the afternoon, but I wanted to get this live in, and so. My apologies if it looks a little darker than it normally does. You could see the silver mica. If I like angle my phone the right way, you could see the glitter of the work. And of course, here's the key block. 
Now I want to highlight a couple of books. I always want to show books uh, that relate to what we're talking about. And these are two very important books that happen to be also available in my bookstore at my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. And this book is sort of the Bible for new Shinhanga. It's called The New Wave, and it illustrates Bob Muller's collection, amazing collection of Japanese prints uh, of, Shin, of the Shinhanga, Shinhanga um, um, you know, period. And so it, his collection went to the Smithsonian. And so if you go to the website, you'll be able to see uh, his prints there. But this book is just so valuable for the conversation about this this genre and it, i mean it goes on and on about virtually every important 20th century shinhanga artist but here we have a really good photo of the work uh, i'm trying to angle it a certain way so the glare isn't too bad so you know we, we have the the print of course there's a description about it and of course the description of the artist and the print and the print is also featured in this uh, important reference book called a female image and it, it, it highlights some of the most important designs by the um, bijinga or beauty artists so all of the artists that that sort of focused on the female form uh, the uh, or bijinga or beautiful images of beautiful women um, is is they are all illustrated in this book and these are the four prints that i was discussing and this is of course the print that we have here anyway i wanted to highlight these two books because I, I think they're 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 really important and handy to have because you could you could refer back to these books learn more about the artists and about each design but uh, you know before i go i want to zoom over the, the each work here so you can see the detail and of course I, 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 I don't want to beat a dead horse but this is such a rare occurrence to be able to show the original work that was produced for in preparation for the finished woodblock print uh, th because this is the original there's only one of this uh, of this piece and so it, it really highlights the process at work we get a really good understanding of what the artist wanted and what ended up happening which essentially is is 99.9 percent .9 of his design you know with with very minor uh, changes and um and here's the key block which of course you know hints at the production of the woodblock print so for collectors to have something like this would be a wonderful thing because again we get an insight into how these shinhanga prints are made Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me. It's wonderful to be back again. Uh, it's been ages, it feels like, that I haven't been on this Woodblock Wednesday broadcast. So um, I want to welcome all of you back to the, the program. I will be basically doing these from here on out without interruption, knock on wood. And um, so we'll, I'll be presenting some uh, wonderful array of prints and paintings in the coming weeks. And of course, my exhibition will be going up um, in a couple of weeks on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. So if you're interested in that, please sign up for our email if you haven't already done so. And of course, if you're interested in reference books or really fine um, Japanese prints, go to our site, check us out. I want to thank all of you for joining me. Oh, and I also want to say hello to the to everyone who watches us on YouTube. This video was conducted live on Facebook and then later uploaded onto YouTube. So where I have 
all of my woodblock Wednesdays archived. So if you like this video and you want to check out the others, feel free to, to have a look. So I want to thank all of you for joining me. I will see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, thank you.